listening to the Sportages Podcast, where sport gets smarter. Welcome to another podcast with Sportages. I've got another very really special guest here with me today. She's a professional climber, Sierra Blair Coyle. Hi, Sierra. Hey, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on the show. Let's kick things off. I read that you've been climbing since you were about 14. So I actually became a professional climber when I was 14. I've been climbing since I was eight years old. Could you tell us a bit about that journey and how you got into it, that sort of thing? Yeah, absolutely. So the way I got into climbing is um, there's like an outdoor mall kind of 10 or 15 minutes away from my house. And um, they had a portable climbing wall there, basically. And so I tried it once and I fell in love and I'd asked my parents to take me back every day. Um, and they would, but this was in like the middle of Arizona summer also, which is, I mean, like 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which is at least 40 Celsius, um, version, but it's hot. So I was just doing that for weeks on end. And I told my parents I wanted to become a professional rock climber and they were like, well, that's awesome. And we support you, but we don't know if that's really a thing. Um, but luckily later in the newspaper, there's an article on a local climbing team and how they just gone national. So my mom showed it to me and asked, you know, like, hey, do you want to sign up for actual, you know, like climbing classes and um, kind of snowballed from there. That's quite the journey. With climbing, what is it that makes you tick? Why do you enjoy the sport and what led you in this direction? I think something about it just felt right to me. Um, so when I was younger, I tried like a variety of sports. Like I kind of grew up doing gymnastics and dance like a lot of, you know, females do. Um, I tried karate for a little bit. I did cheer for a little bit. And whenever something would get hard and you'd have to work at it, yeah. um, I kind of would bail. I'd be like, ah, oh, you know, like you're a little a kid at that point. You know, you don't necessarily want to be working super hard. But I don't know something about climbing. I think like when it started to get hard, I wanted to keep doing it and get better. Like I didn't want to quit this time. So that was my like sign, I guess, that I just wanted to keep doing it. Yeah, as a bit of an amateur climber myself, the adrenaline that you get when you finish a route is phenomenal. Yeah, I think that's the crazy part, too, because even like after climbing for 17 years, you know, like at least once a week, if not more, like I do something and I'm like, Phew, you know, like glad to be done with it because it was hard, but like really proud I did it. And I don't know, you continue to like, I don't want to say impress yourself, but like you impress yourself with the things you can accomplish. And I don't know, it's just really cool. it's like the never ending improvement. What is your favorite climbing discipline and why? It's definitely bouldering. Bouldering is my favorite for sure. Why bouldering? Why not lead or speed or? Um, I think it's just like the simple thing of like, I just like it better. It's kind of the only way to say it. I trained a little bit of lead and speed last year um, to do our combined nationals. And mm -hmm. at first I was like, oh, this is cool, like training something different. And then I just was like, man, I really, really like bouldering, yes. you know? Um, but yeah, it's just weird. It's like one of those simple things where it's just, I like it better. And what, what sort of holes do you enjoy more so than others? And perhaps which ones do you not like that much? Oh, I mean, I really like big, funky volumes. Um, I think I just like the creativity behind them, and you can move around them in so many ways, and that's always interesting to see. Um, as far as holds that I don't like, I really don't like mono pockets, and I think I, I don't like pockets in general, especially small ones. I think they need to just stop setting with them. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that's a, that's a bit of a suggestion to the root setters around town. <laughs> I May or may not skip all pocket boulders at the gym. Yeah. <laughs> I might be notorious for it. <laughs> and I guess with your gym and training regime, what do you sort of go through? Because there's so much that happens behind the scenes, you know, besides the yeah. competition itself. Yeah, so I just adjusted my training schedule recently, actually. Um, but it's still, I've been doing three days on one day off for a long time. Um, but it's just like how I structure what I'm doing on those days that changes. So right now on my first day, I like camp and do, um, hangboard in the morning. And then at night I go project, um, at the climbing gym. Mm -hmm. And then on my second day I do like a big board session and that's all I do. And then on the third day I strength train in the morning. So like normal gym stuff basically. And then at night, um, I'll either project or I'll do volume depending on, kind of like how tired I am and then yeah. if there's anyone in the gym to climb. <laughs> and you obviously climb outdoors as well? 
I do. I definitely climb more indoors, I would say, just for training sakes. But um, I climbed outside a lot, especially when I was younger. And what is what do you think is the key difference between the two? I think the one thing that someone pointed out to me a long time ago, and it just makes total sense, is indoors, the holds like stick out of the wall almost I mean, basically always, like, they're rarely, like, you know, carved into the wall. Right. Um, but outdoors, it's, like, usually, you know, everything is, like, in the wall somehow. Like, even if it's a crimp, you know, it's, like, it's recessed back. It's never sticking out. So that's always kind of interesting. Like, just reading out lines can be harder, especially, like, you know, you go to a root or a boulder problem in the gym. Mm-hmm. You can, like, very obviously see all the holds you're going to use. Um, or have the option of using you might not know like the beta but sure. you know you go outside if you haven't seen someone climb the boulder or even if you have like there's mm-hmm. always like the one random foot someone finds useful that someone else doesn't or um you know like crimp on someone can't i've got a i've got a question about this really cool thing that you did a while ago i think climbing that building in korea i think it was oh yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Could you tell me a bit about that? It just the video that I saw was absolutely awesome. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Um, so I was getting ready to go do three World Cups in a row, and about a week before I left, I got um, an email from an agent asking like if I wanted to be in a vacuum commercial, and I was yeah. like, "Well, sure." Like, let the, and that's like literally all the information I have is that I'm in a vacuum commercial, and so um, none of this gets set up until I'm already like overseas. Like, I was in Japan. Someone had to fly from Korea to Japan, meet me, take my passport, go get me a work visa for Korea. Wow. Um, so then I went to Japan for a week with my passport, yep. uh, 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 which is fine. I need it, but I was like, oh, let's just, just in case, let's hope nothing goes wrong here. <laughs> um, and then basically what we did is, yeah, we were shooting for um, LG with the vacuums, and I had two vacuums on me, and then they were, like, attached to suction cups. And, yeah, I got to climb the side of the building, which was – it was pretty crazy. It was – I mean, like, super easy to learn, um, but it, the one thing that was strange is you have to, like, click the suction on and off on the vacuums, because, right. um, like, otherwise, if you don't ever take the suction, you can never, like, lift them. You're just stuck where you are, oh, so yeah. it's pretty interesting to do. Yeah, yeah right, and I think uh, you, me- you mentioned that you'd love to climb the Burj Khalifa at that point in Dubai. Interestingly enough, I grew up in Dubai. I was born there. I just wanted to know, is it because it's the tallest building in the world or is it because Tom Cruise did it? Because, I mean, I was inspired by Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible 2 to yeah. start climbing in the first place. So just a fun story around that from you, maybe. I think, well, okay, number one, I'm dying to go to Dubai. So any excuse I have to go there, yeah. I'll be there. But um <laughs> Yeah, I just think it'd be cool to do such an iconic, you know, tall, beautiful building. It would be cool to have the opportunity to climb. And moving to your career, what are you? What do you sort of have on the horizon, and what are you looking to do, aiming to do, that sort of thing? Yeah, so my climbing career is kind of weird in a way because um, a lot of it is scheduled so last minute. So basically, what all I'm doing right now is I'm training. Um, I have a competition in December that I know I'm doing. And then um, our national, I think, is late January, early February. Mm-hmm. Then past that, um, I'll hopefully be doing World Cups, depending on how they're selecting the team. And um, some other, like, domestic competitions as well. So I'm kind of just, I guess, like, you know, a lot of it is waiting and seeing what I get invitations to, which can be, you know, last minute. But, yeah, so that's just I'm basically just doing what I've always done is, you know, training, competing, um, seizing cool opportunities. And um, I'm hoping to one day open a climbing gym in Phoenix as well. So that's on the oh, okay. yeah. first horizon, but definitely yeah. our eventual plan. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, so you, you touched on the process behind how you get invitations and you get selected in a team. How exactly does that work? You know, I wish I could give you a good answer, but they keep yeah. changing selection every year. So right, um, right, right. even our selection this year, I I always read the rule book when it comes out because it's a good thing to do. Um, but a lot of it is really subject to change based on like USA Climbing is our federation um, for, you know, the United States. And then yeah. the IFSC is um, the international federation that governs sure. everyone else. So our rules are set for now, but then I there's like a little blurb that's basically like, dependent on IFSC selection criteria as well. So yep. yeah, a lot of 
things change, rules change. In a way that's part and parcel of a sport that's evolving so rapidly and becoming a lot more mainstream. Yeah, it's crazy. I think within the past year, especially, there just have been um, so many changes in climbing, um, which is really interesting to see because, yeah, prior to that, for so many years, like, they would make a change every once in a while, but it was like, you pretty much knew what was going on, but within the past year, they just made a bunch of big changes um, later in the, the game, you know, so yeah. everyone was like, oh, well, I guess you're figuring it out now. That, of course, uh, brings me to the question that everyone seems to always ask and talk about, which is the format that they've gone with at the Olympics and bringing the three disciplines together. A lot of people have, a lot of people love it. A lot of people criticize it. Where do you yeah. stand? What do you think? I mean, I don't think it's ideal. I think having the three separate disciplines like does the best to honor the athletes and what they're good at. Um, I mean, ultimately, it is what it is. And like you're stuck doing all three if you want to do the Olympics. Sure. But I mean, I would say if everyone had their choice, yeah. they would be doing, you know, individual disciplines. But I'm assuming that perhaps there is potential for that to happen in the future at the Olympics. Who knows? Yeah, I think um, from what I've heard, it sounds like in 2024, they're going to split it. Um, so speed gets split separately from bouldering and the lead. It's good um, because honestly, the speed climbers um, have really just been the most disadvantaged in the way the format's set up, in my opinion. Sure. Um, and then probably, I guess I'm assuming that in 2028, maybe we'll be down three disciplines. And coming to, you know, obviously the Olympics are around the corner. There's big hype. How is climbing as a career? And what is the potential for people to do climbing professionally as a career? I mean, climbing is just getting so much bigger, which has been so cool to see from when I started to now. Um, I would say right now it's still difficult to make it as a professional climber in your career where, you know, you're just, you can live off your sponsorships, basically. Um, that's hard to do still, but I think it's mm -hmm. getting easier, you know, right. so I think it's, yeah. Um, I don't know. I hate to, it's never easy to make it as a professional athlete in any sport. Sure. I think because um, it's you know the weird thing is the more popular the sport is, the more people are in the sport. So it's Absolutely. it's more, competitive, but also the more endorsement money is in the sport. Um, so yeah, I mean, I think it's going to ultimately get better for the people who can make it as professionals. And a question that keeps coming to my mind whenever I talk to um, athletes is. You know, if you had a bunch of young kids who are aspiring to be climbers, particularly young girls, what would you what would you say to them? What what advice would you give? I mean, number one, obviously have fun. And then I think at some point, you know, make the decision. Like if you want to be good at climbing or really whatever you're doing, like make the decision and dedicate yourself towards that. And um, I just think it's important to make that conscious decision. Like I want to be good at this and I'm going to do everything I can because when you're working hard at something, like there's no way you can't be successful somehow, you know, um, let's say you choose climbing and you want to be really good at it. You know, you work really hard and maybe you end up not being perfectly cut out at it and not quite as good as you would hope to be, but that somehow it will lead into something else or it just gives you like the drive and determination to, you know, transfer that into um, a different career or whatever. So right. yeah, just, Work hard and then work harder, basically. Yeah. And what what do you get up to when you're not climbing? Um, I'm pretty boring, honestly. Uh, I like to read. Um, I yeah. hang out with my cats a lot and um, right. just try and catch up on like a lot of errands and random things that are going on around here. Sure, sure. So, what are you? Is there anything particular that you're reading at the moment? No, I'm actually in between books right now. I need to go to the library. Um, I'm like, I'm obsessed with our library. It's like 10 minutes from the house and it's, I don't know. I just really like it. It's right. also right next to um, like in the, an adult living community. So they're always, you know, like really cute older people there. Yeah. <laughs> it's fun to see. Is there like a specific sort of genre you enjoy or you're pretty much open to anything? I'm pretty much open to anything. I don't like nonfiction very much. Um, right be like my thing I would probably never read for fun you know um yeah. but I, I really like mystery and romance those are my two okay. go-to yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll transition back back to the climbing yeah <laughs> how is it I guess representing the U.S. and what is the environment like what's the culture like I mean it's been cool to um you know compete as part of the U.S. team just 
I guess from the opportunities you get, um, for me, like going to all the World Cups has been so amazing. Uh, just traveling, climbing other places, just the things I've been exposed to, like it's and the people I've been exposed to. Um, right. What happens is like once you end up traveling on like the World Cup circuit with all these other athletes from different countries, is you become this uh, what someone calls it the traveling circus, and that's right. you know kind of what it is. It's like sometimes you're in these like places where there's just nothing else around except you guys and um, you're adapting to a different culture. Um, It's just, it's always an adventure. I'll say, you know, you always come back with good stories, whether things are going really well or things are going really not well. You always have a story. (laughs) Do you have any interesting story from any of those trips that you want to share? Oh gosh, I'm trying to think of one. Um, Gosh, what's a good one? So, okay, I don't know why I'm thinking of someone else's story that's not mine. Yeah. And I don't know. When we were taking trains from Shanghai to Nanjing in China, um, this didn't happen on my train, but on someone else's train, there was a yeah. fist fight in their train car between these two, like, men. And so that was, like, really interesting to hear about. Yeah. yeah. I don't know why I'm blanking so hard. I have, like, yeah. a thousand stories. Yeah, sorry. I did sort of put you on the spot there, so. <laughs> oh, okay. It's, like, any other time I could, like, just – not like stop talking for two hours about this and right now i'm like oh i don't know like it is early morning there here polar opposite yeah. australia but what would you say is the highlight of your career so far it's so hard because i've had so many good memories i think for me the coolest thing that's happened is i finally won my first professional competition um right. last october and that was really cool like i wouldn't say i had quite given up on winning a professional competition because i hadn't but i was also like for me, I want to, like, be so good, and if I could win everything, that would be amazing. Um, I also am, like, I want to enjoy my climbing career and not kill myself over not, <clears throat> not like, being the absolute best, you know what I mean? So right. I've just been, like, work hard, you'll do as well as you do, and, you know, whatever. And then I, like, won a professional competition, and I was like, okay, this is cool, like, <laughs> you know, it finally happened. So that was, yeah. that was exciting for me, and I um, it was one of those things, too, where, like, I basically climbed in the competition and I knew I would be like in third place no matter what. And I was excited about that. So I was like, cool, like I'll at least be on podium. That's exciting. Yeah. And then I'm like walking around and someone came up to me and they're like, yeah, dude, so you should have won. You like won. And I was like, huh? I'm like, are you, are you positive about this? Um, yeah. And I like didn't believe them, you know, until like right. awards were getting out. Yeah. I was like, are you sure something did get messed up here? But that was really uh, Which competition was that? It was the Mesa Rim Pro-Am. Oh, right. Okay. On that note, which country do you think has the best climbers at the moment and why? Ooh, I mean, probably it's Japan or Slovenia. Um, I don't know. It's it's really hard to choose between the two, honestly. I think that Japan might have a bigger team in general, and they have way more people to pull from than Slovenia, and the Slovenian team's smaller. They're just really good, you know, and just continually produce such great athletes, you know, year after year. Um, so whatever those kind doing among like along with so many other countries with great athletes you know they're doing it well what do you think i guess the that the u.s needs to do to sort of really be up there or what is it that's lacking or perhaps like a stage that the u.s isn't Mm -hmm. quite at yet yeah i mean so i think the u.s is definitely getting better and like now there's a team training center where um i'm just going to specifically talk for bouldering because that's like know my wheelhouse you know that I know well and so for a long time it was like the setting at the you know world cups was so different than anything you could train on in the U.S. that it's like it's just crazy it's so different you know um so having like the ability to train that style is really good obviously you know the more U.S. athletes that go to international competitions you know the more they're exposed the better um but I honestly think like at the low end, it needs to, like, get better with setting and everything because, like, if you grow up, you know, from day one until yeah. you're eating at a high level, if you're training on um, just easier versions of the competition boulders, like, you're going to be better at them and so much more used to them. So I think it's going to need to be um, a nationwide effort amongst the gyms to try yeah. and uh, switch from the American way to the worldwide way. Yeah, because when you look at it in Australia, what it is is, everyone has at least gone climbing once in high school or whatever it is, but it's more of sort of a social activity that you go and try out with your mates, like bowling or something like that. And is it similar in the States? 
Yeah, I think we finally jumped over the hurdle of people thinking climbing is really dangerous, you know, so yeah. <laughs> well, I've definitely tried it. Um, yeah, but it's it's cool. I don't know how it is in Australia, but here it's starting to become a thing where like people just go climbing as like their choice of fitness activity now, which is it's good to see that people, um, you know, are finding different ways to like love climbing. Yeah, and um, have you have you ever been climbing in Australia? No, I yeah. really want to go to Australia. Yeah, that's definitely one of the places. Yeah, it, uh, climbing has started to pick up here a bit, but of course, it's it's mm-hmm. nowhere close to where it is in the states, let alone Japan or or anywhere else. Yeah. But what sort of gyms do you mostly find in the states? So across across the country, is it a mixture of different disciplines, bouldering, lead, and so on, or is it specific gyms? Um, I would say right now there are a lot of bouldering only gyms opening. Um, and then there are also gyms that'll do, you know, bouldering sport and speed where they have like the standard, you know, 15 meter speed walls. So that means that the sport walls are also like 15 meters or so. Right. Um, those that don't open up quite as quickly just because they take, you know, so much more money to open up and then they're way yeah. taller. So you have the height ordinances and things, but yeah, it's a yeah. mix between, you know, all bouldering or all three. Um, and then I would say like almost now it's crazy in the U S like, unless you're opening a gym with, you know. 50 foot tall sport walls it's like yeah. people just think they're stuck back forever ago you know right so, you can really commit if you want to have sport climbing now i would say and of course you you touched on earlier about how you know you want to start your own gym at some point soon you said you talked a bit about it but what does that entail <laughs> what sort of gym if you will, if you'd like to share uh, are you thinking of opening and what are some of the hurdles that you come across or you've come across so far? Yeah. I mean, so for me, it's more of an idea at this point, just something I would, you know, like to do, yeah. but, um, yeah, I mean, I would want to do an all bouldering gym. And the one thing that I feel like is happening, which is really good is like, um, a lot of gyms are opening that cater to entry level climbers now, which is awesome. It just, you know, gets more people into the sport, but there still is much for, like, the high-end training. Um, and that's not even, like, professional yeah. level. That's just people who want to, like, dedicate time into improving their climbing who aren't pros, you know. Sure. And there's so many, you know, tools to do that now. So I think it'd be cool to have a gym that um, has a heavier focus on that but also can let, you know, caters to all abilities but, you know, gives the high-end yeah. the tools that just are never really available. So almost like a sort of a niche that, enables people to specialize in climbing if they want to. Yeah, that's what I think so. And I think, um, I don't know, I think you can find the balance of having, um, you know, more than one, like, type of climber in your gym, you know what I mean? So, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, it'd be great to hear in a year or a couple of years that, you know, you've got your own gym running. That'd be pretty cool. I'm excited about it. <laughs> thank you for your time and thanks for... Yeah, thank you so much. It was great talking to you. Thanks a lot. And, uh, yeah, have a good day. Mm, bye. Thank you for tuning into the Sportages Podcast. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram.